All right. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about evolving past childhood spirituality. So this is going to be the beginning of a conversation, uh, not a definitive end point to this conversation because there is going to be a lot that we're going to talk about. So in the next video, I'm going to be talking about why understanding and meeting your own needs is the is the surest fire way to evolve past childhood spirituality into adult spirituality. And now today, I realize and recognize that there is a lot going on in the world right now. And I mean, spiritual people always say that. <laughs> it's a very intense time on the planet, but obviously right now, uh, it's at a, it's an exceptionally intense period. And I think that that's actually warranted to say that it's exceptionally intense. And so I'm not going to be speaking directly to anything that's happening currently right now, but I am going to be speaking generally about currently what's happening right now, because a huge part of what's happening right now is that we are being called. <laughs> and I mean, you again, you can believe in the spiritual side of things like this is all an evolution and we are being called to see something. Or you can even just see that like, we're at a point right now where the consequences of our current level of understanding and the actions we have taken from our current level of understanding, the consequences of what is the pattern that we've been running, the assumptions about reality that we have had and how things work and what success means and what it looks like to live a good life and all of these things we're starting to see the long-term effects of those perceptions and of the choices that we've been making from those perceptions. And what we are starting to see right now is we're at a place where it's like, okay, the destruction and the chaos that is coming from our current level of understanding is saying, now is a time <laughs> where you either are going to grow you're going to learn from the destruction and the chaos of your choices, not making it wrong or bad, not saying you should have known already, not shaming and blaming ourselves as a culture or as a humanity, but rather saying, okay, what are we going to do with this information? Because staying the same, staying how we are, staying in our current method of operation, which is very, very childlike, and I'll talk about that in a second, is causing chaos. We're at a point now where we have enough information about the stage that we've been in of this evolution of humanity that we're, we're pushing up against, okay, we need something new. We need to shift things. And especially in politics right now, right? Like the, the main call is like, we want something different than what we've had. We don't want to keep doing the same dance we've been doing. And I think this is not just in the US, but this is everywhere. We're starting to just really see that like, okay, our method of operation, which has been very capitalistic, it's been very, very, very much either like if we look globally, where we can see that humanity is operating under very much a, a religious mindset where we're dictatorships and there are very strict right and wrong rules. There are very strict, this is how we have to be. There's uh, wars over land. There's wars over resources. There's your people versus my people. And we, we, we have that and then we have the, the capitalism, materialism, mechanistic worldview. That profit at all cost, profit over people, profit over everything. That the commoditization of the human being, the commoditization of the human life. And these are growth stages. It, humanity has been operating from its understanding and again if we want something new 
we have to understand that in order to get something new, you have to do something you've never done before. You have to be someone you've never been before. And in order to do that, you have to grow. You have to expand beyond your current understanding of how things work and our current mm, problem solving capacities. We got to expand beyond what we think the problem is and what we think the solution is. That's a big part of this, is that in order to create something new, we have to be able to see the problems that we're facing from an expanded vantage point. We have to be able to see the, the greater systems instead of looking at topics and looking at specific things that and, and trying to kind of put out all the little fires. We need to look systemically at where are those little fires coming from? How are these little fires co-created? How are these things all interconnected? And what's the root, what's the underlying foundation that's creating the conditions for these things? And what are the needs that these things are meeting? What are, what are we doing and why are we doing it this way without judging ourselves? <laughs> because again, we got to understand that everything that is done is done from this is just what humanity thinks humanity needs to do to survive. Humanity has always been this way. We are just doing what we think we have to do to survive based on our current level of understanding. And the world is not equal in its understanding of what humanity needs to survive. So when we think about someone who's more conscious, what we're really saying, if they really are truly more conscious than other people, is they have a broader vantage point, a broader perspective of what is required for human life to survive and thrive. The less evolved people are not stupid, are not ignorant, are not broken. It's their vantage point for what is required for success and thriving is simply much smaller than the more conscious person. So the less conscious person is literally doing the best they know. They, they really believe that their actions and their way of doing things is the way, right? So this competition model, the every man for himself, the, the systems that started that, that we're now seeing, okay, these are the consequences of that. When humanity doesn't work as a collective, when humanity doesn't work as a group that is dependent upon one another, when it's survival of the fittest, within a capitalist, materialist society, we have a lot, a lot of people who are gonna be disenfranchised. It necessitates that there are people who do not have enough. It necessitates that there are people at the bottom of this structure. Um, I was watching an actualized.org video about orange level consciousness and Leo said, you know, America is essentially the world's largest multi-level or pyramid scheme. And I think that that's a brilliant observation that the capitalist model, the pure capitalism that we're kind of seeing, and I know that we don't have pure capitalism anywhere, but the, the profit model, the like every man for himself, you get to just go build your life. Everyone has the right to whatever, which of course is not really true. But because in order for this pyramid to exist, in order for the people who are at the top to exist at the top, it necessitates their people under them. It is not true, right? And this is why I talk about my, in my abundance teachings. It is not true that we could all be millionaires. It is not true that we could all be billionaires. It is not true that we could all have the opulence and the, the levels of, of overconsumption that people at the tops of society have. We could not all have that. The planet could not hold that. In order for people to be at the top of that system, it necessitates that there are people that they have to take advantage of, that they have to step on, that they have to exploit, that they have to 
take away their rights in order for them to exist where they exist. So we as a humanity, as conscious people, have to step back and say, okay, this whole system of hierarchy, human hierarchy, is this what we want to go forward with? Okay, so now let's back up for a sec. We need to see that our childhood spirituality, this idea that I create my own reality, that everyone is just manifesting what they deserve, that there is a perfect guru or a perfect teaching or a perfect something out there, and when we find it, we will tran be transported to heaven. The idea that reality exists between my ears. It's all just my creation. Or I have no control over what happens out there. I just have to have faith in a God or faith in a someone else or faith in the system to do it for me. All of these, right? All of these things are coming from childhood trauma. It's, that's a childhood view of the world. And we are all tired, okay? Especially spiritual people, conscious people. We're tired of fighting. We're tired of trying to convince people. We're tired of trying to wake the world up. And that fatigue is a sign that we need to shift how we're working. That's our childhood trauma telling us, well, that's our bodies telling us we're operating outside of reality with what we think is going to help the world, what we think is going to mature things, what we think is the mature thing to do. That's our body saying, no, that, that's what your mind thinks, but that's not what reality is. Okay. We want, when we say we want to go to 5D, we want to see a humanity that's evolved. We want a, a, a conscious humanity. What we are really saying is we want a collective that has expanded their view and understanding of what a human needs to thrive. And we have come out of our childhood fight and flight. Let's just do what we've always done and be who we've always been and fight for the system we have because it's familiar and it's working for a few people and we can all get there. And if we all just work hard enough, we will get there, right? And, and the religious um, dictatorship cultures and the capitalist culture both work under the same, if you just perfect yourself enough, you will have the blessing of the heaven or the blessing of the consumerist you know, society. And it's been spiritualized. You'll be abundant in your work and you'll have all of this abundance and it's spiritual to be rich and all this. It's the same thing. It's this, if you just do the right thing, life will reward you with heaven. And <laughs> We need to evolve past that way of thinking. That, no. Reality is we are a collective. So this idea of I create my own reality, everyone's just manifesting their thing, you, your life doesn't affect my life, my life doesn't affect your life, no. Of course we want to simplify reality to that. Right? That, that's how a lot of us in the spiritual community are alleviating our guilt. When we look out at the world and see the massive wealth gaps, the, the, the disparity between people, the, the huge gap between what we have and what everyone else has, we want to just tell ourselves, well, I manifested this, or I created this, or I worked hard for this. And there's nothing to say that you didn't. I, I, you did. You absolutely did. Whatever you have, you worked for. But to say that everyone could work as hard as you and do what you did and have what you have is a lie. Because if we just take a step back for a sec, right? If you're born in, in a westernized country 
and you get to go to school, and you learn English as a first language, and you're relatively normal in your body, you have advantages for the life that you can create for yourself that go far beyond what someone born without those things has. They could work just as hard as you, and the world is simply not set up to support them getting to where you are, right? As conscious beings, we need to first acknowledge that none of us are self-made, that none of us got to where we are with no help. And even if it really seems like people didn't help you or people antagonized you, that, again, probably true. No one can take that away from you. Your experience of this having been hard, whatever it is that you've gone through to become who and what you are, I, I am not here to take that away. And I can't take that away. That is real. And, and, you had advantages. You had certain that you were born halfway up the mountain. And I'm not here to say that past lives or you did something in a past life to deserve it or whatever. I don't really personally buy into that. What I am just going to say is that I don't know why people are born into the situations that they're born into. And I don't know what happens after death because I haven't died yet. Right? We all have our theories. We all have our ideas. We all have our ayahuasca trip and that we think we understand life and death. But until you experience it, you can't actually know. So I'm not going to pretend as a conscious person that I know something that I don't know that I know. What I'm going to say is that what I have observed is that, again, humanity is a collective. Everything that I have created in my life came from people before me. Everything that I have been able to do with my life came from, I was born into a Western culture. I had food and water and clothes and education. I didn't build the electrical grid. I didn't build the internet. I didn't build the airplanes. All of these things that have given me the capacity to live the life that I live. I didn't make those things. I didn't earn those things. Those things were freely given to me. And so yes, I have done a lot of things with those resources that I was given and I have worked very hard, but again, the amount of effort that I put in, someone born to non-English non speaking, don't get to go to school, rural, place that has very little resources and just war, they are not going to get to where I am. And that is just facts. So the other reality is we don't have control over other people. We, I cannot go and force any society, any culture, any person to evolve and to stop fighting and to learn how to work with the land and to think long term instead of short term. I can't take anyone else out of their circumstances. So where does that leave us? As global citizens who want to help the world, who want to be of service in adult spirituality, where does that leave us? Understanding that we were giving, given a lot and we don't have control over where people were born or how people were born or what, how that is. And we can't force growth on anyone. We can't force evolution. Where does that leave us? That leaves us with taking responsibility for ourselves. And what that means, what that truly means, is that when we say, I want to live from a place of love instead of fear, I want to be in 5D, I want to evolve my DNA, I want to have this, Spiritual, these spiritual experiences 
where I understand God and I understand oneness and I can help people. What that really translates to in plain human English is that you are in a state where you know how to regulate your nervous system. And I know that that's like not what we want to hear, right? We want to hear channel the Pleiadians or take this plant medicine or do this meditation technique and all this. It's not magic. Growing up and being a conscious person is not a magical thing. It may feel magical and magical things will happen because reality is complex. And it, it, there's always going to be wonder. And there's always going to be the like, whoa, that blows my mind. And I didn't see that coming. And oh my gosh, because again, you, you, we're never going to understand reality. It's always going to surprise us. We're always going to be surprising ourselves. We're always going to be growing and evolving ourselves. But living as an adult simply means you know how to bring your nervous system from fight or flight into rest and digest. Because when we're in fight or flight, this is the world we're living in right now. We're living in a world full of humans that are in fight or flight, that are in trauma, that are literally acting from programming, right? When we're in that fight or flight state, when we're acting from programming, when we're in the matrix, whatever you want to call it, we're operating under stories and assumptions about what reality is. Things that we have been told, this is how this works. This is what you have to do for success. This is right and wrong. The morality that we have, the, the ideas of right and wrong, good and bad, the ideas of the rules and what we have to do, right? And we all have it. Whether you're religious, new age, you follow the government, you're, you're anti all these things, there's still complete codes of conduct for how you behave and how you speak and how you make your choices that are in alignment with the group you're in. We're all doing it. We're all operating under some program. So long as we're not actively engaged in our lives, and this is, this is the thing that most people, it's gonna blow your mind when you really start to do this work of just how not engaged in your life you are. How you're operating from the knee-jerk reaction of this is what I assume is happening and this is what I'm going to do about it. We're not observing. We're not curious. We're not learning. We're doing the same things over and over again, right? We have the same relationships over and over. We do the same thing with our diets over and over. We do the same thing with our work over and over. We just have these repetitive cycles and we, and we, we don't know how to break our cycles. And then we go and we do some spiritual thing or some program or some how to fix your broken brain. And some spiritual person tells us that they can sell us their book and tell us how to transcend or maybe we'll just like stop feeling our emotions or we're going to transcend all this and get rid of our humanness and all of this. And we're just constantly in this like, like I say, this mess of either in our programs or trying to break our programs, but that just stimulating our nervous systems more into fear, which then drive us deeper into our programs, right? So we do all these things. We think we're different. We think we're changing. We got all this momentum and then we fall back even harder to what we were doing before. Yeah, because that's what your nervous system is going to do. Change is never going to come from that. Evolution is never going to come from that. You're tired because you're pushing and you're forcing and you're trying to create a world from a place of force, right? Power versus force. And it's, we want power. And where does power come from? Power comes from a nervous system that's regulated, okay? And nervous system regulation, being in an adult consciousness, is not something you work to, work to, work to, and then you get to, and then you're that now. We are all going to get kicked into fight or flight. We're all going to get kicked into our programs. Because this world is so chaotic. There's so much stimuli coming at us at all times. There are so many things happening out there that are frightening. 
And I just really want to validate that. Okay? This world is not safe for most people. What is happening on the world stage is incredibly traumatizing for most people. And that needs to be completely validated. And it is true. And it is frightening. And it is traumatizing. And it is triggering. And it is angering. And it will make you sad. And that is real. And that needs to be felt and validated and processed through. Okay? So if you're in a stage of grief or sadness or anger or serious fatigue right now, your next step in becoming an adult is not pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and being strong and just forgetting about it and move. No. Your next steps are validation. What do I need to do to make myself feel safe right now? What do I need to do to make myself feel heard right now? What do I need to do to create a space for me to process this, to move this through my body? Like not to hold it in and try and be stoic and strong. It's like, we gotta move, we gotta breathe, we gotta cry, we gotta scream, we gotta do the emotional processing. We gotta sleep if we can. Whatever you can do, whatever is available to you. Every single one of us across the board, all of humanity, we need to get more embodied, we get to validate ourselves and stop gaslighting ourselves, and especially stop listening to anyone or anything in the spiritual world that's telling you how you should feel, how you should be processing, how you should be reacting to whatever's happening. Don't listen to that. It's bullshit. There's nothing wrong with you. How you feel is valid. You are valid. What is traumatizing to you is traumatizing. What hurts you hurts. What makes you sad, what makes you angry, what makes you scared, what you're seeing that you don't want, what you want to change, all real, true. Yes, validate that. Make room for it, make space for it, open yourself. That's the first step in bringing yourself into nervous system regulation. You being that parent for yourself that you never had. That doesn't tell you that you're wrong, that doesn't shame you, that doesn't guilt you, that doesn't tell you you're broken, that doesn't tell you you need to be different. The first step is validate yourself. What do I need to feel safe right now? Not fixed, not different, not, not how do I get rid of this, not how do I make it better, not how do I empower myself so I can change it. What do you need to feel safe right now? And you might not have access to that thing. And then you validate that. And you do what you can in this moment. Because all of us are going to have something we can do. It may not be the ultimate thing, but we're going to take a step because that's what an adult does. We say, okay. I validate how I'm feeling, I see what I want, I don't have access to the thing that I want, what's the next best thing? Because learning how to actually show up for yourself in whatever you're going through right now is the first step in becoming a spiritual adult. You don't shame yourself, you don't reject yourself, you don't abandon yourself. When you don't feel well, you want to fix it. Absolutely. But again, in order to actually fix it, you need more information than you have right now. Otherwise, you would have fixed it already. Otherwise, all those other 400 attempts that you've made at fixing it with what you think is the solution would have fixed it by now. We need to admit to ourselves, if we were actually capable of fixing it right now, we would. So as much as it's horrifying to admit to ourselves, I don't actually know what's going to fix this. This is the second step in becoming a spiritual adult. So the first step is you validate how you're feeling. You make it safe to be where you are. The second step is I don't actually have the answer. Because if I did, I would already be doing it. It would have worked the last time. 
all those other times I tried it, you have to call yourself on this. That you've been doing what you think is the right answer. Of course you have. Because you're lovely and you're beautiful and you're perfect and you're innocent. And you're just like everyone else who's doing the best they can with what they know. You are not fucking up your own life. You are not failing to fix things just because you're trying to, you're doing things wrong. As in like, you have the answer and you're just messing it up. That's what the capitalist and the spiritualist world is telling you right now. You have the answer. You have the tool. I gave it to you. If it doesn't work, it's because you did it wrong. If you fell off the diet, it's because you suck. You just don't have enough willpower. If you stop doing the meditation technique or you're doing the meditation technique, you're doing the yoga, you're doing the spiritual thing, you're doing the positivity rallies, you're doing the mindset shit, you're doing it all and it's still not working, you're still doing your thing, it's not because you're broken and doing it wrong. It's because that tool isn't working. We need to stop allowing ourselves again to be manipulated by the spiritual and the self-help worlds saying we've given you the tools. If they're not working, you're just doing it wrong. Or don't worry, I have a new one. Or don't worry, here's another one. Or you can just buy my next book. Or just come to my next seminar. Feed, 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 feed. That's materialism. There's nothing wrong with you. If what you're doing isn't working, you need more information. Which means you have to surrender into the unknown. And this is where we need to learn to comfort our inner child and to become the witness that we can be with ourselves in the unknown. This is the most scary, unfamiliar, uncomfortable place humanity ever goes. Which is, I'm facing a problem. I've done everything I know to do. I've done everything that I can. I've fought, I've laid down, I've shamed, I've guilted, I've, do I've done all the things that I know to do. And they haven't worked. So now I need to surrender to the idea that there's something I'm not seeing. There's something I'm not aware of. I'm running my programs of what I think this is and what I think this means and what I think the answer is and even like what I think is happening. And my version of reality is clearly not correct. Otherwise my solution would have worked. It would be making progress. Things would be getting better. So the second step is allowing yourself to enter into the unknown, to let go of what you think reality is, to let go of what you think the rules are. And this is why pretty much no one ever grows up. Because this is what deprogramming de and deconditioning and waking up from the matrix actually means. It's not just finding a new system of what the right rules are, right? Everyone who thinks that they're waking up by just switching from I follow mainstream media to I follow alternative media. <laughs> it's like switching religions. Like I used to be Christian and now I'm Muslim. Are you closer to truth? D like, and I'm not saying that you can't find truth in Christianity or that you can't find truth in, in being a Muslim. I'm not saying that at all. I believe 100% the truth is available to anyone through any path. If you're looking for the truth, you're going to find it. But switching from this box to this box that's on the same level is just a different box. It's not an expanded awareness. It's the same story, just I'm on this side of it now instead of this side. No. Evolution says the box is too small. I have to leave this level of understanding, right? So the, the consciousness right now that there's the evil overlords who are controlling everything, that this, and then there's going to be the savior that's gonna secretly somehow rescue all of us from this mess. Okay, 
What does that sound like? Every religion ever. Capitalism will save us from the evils of the monarchy. This political leader is going to come in and completely change the whole system and save us from the evil that political party. That's our sun god myth that we just keep recycling it over and over and over again. There's this evil thing in the world, we don't know what to do about it. Some savior is going to come and rescue us all from it. And if we just follow the rules, we will be on the good side that will be favored by said savior. If that's your life ethos, you need to evolve beyond that. It doesn't matter who the characters are or what your good group and what your bad group and who your savior is and what the rules are, right? We all think we're waking up. But it's like, if you're just following a new set of rules, believing in a new savior, who's going to rescue you from the evil thing, that's not a different level of awareness. That's the same thing over and over and over. So again, why do we have the humanity that we have? Not because there's an evil group who's ruling the whole thing. We have lots of traumatized people who are doing traumatizing things, absolutely. I'm not saying that there isn't a lot of corruption everywhere. That's absolutely true. But it's not organized, high-level intelligence corruption. It's just people doing whatever they need to do for themselves in the moment to get the most profit. That's all it is. It's the shitty pyramid. And if we want something different, we need to stop waiting to be rescued and we need to stop looking to rescue. We're, we need to evolve past that paradigm completely. So what does that mean? That means we actually become this very co-opted word now, sovereign, which is a very evolved understanding. Because true sovereignty is not, I did this all myself, I created my life, I manifested my reality, it's just me against, no, that's capitalism. That's not an evolution from where we are, that's exactly where we are. The evolution from where we are is, I am a part of a whole. I am an individual who is a part of a whole. So we have the religious dictator mindset, blue spiral dynamics, which is all we're just the whole. We're the collective, the everyone works for the collective, the system is the system, and I have to just keep that. And then we have orange. We have the capitalism, the materialism. I am an individual. Every man for himself. This is the system. If you aren't good at the system, well, fuck you. Just survival of the fittest. Let's just do this. We need to evolve to the next level of no, no, no. We are a collection of individuals. We have a collective responsibility as individuals. We're not every man for himself. We're not only a collective and everyone should be the same and follow all the same rules and do all the same things. We are individuals with individual needs. We are individuals with individual strengths. We are individuals with individual things that we can offer and it's never going to be equal. So what are we actually okay with? Do we want to keep the survival of the fittest? Do we want to keep the pyramid and keep fighting our way up the pyramid to keep buying into that system, which necessitates that there are a whole bunch of people at the bottom who will never ever have a chance to get anywhere? Or do we want to say, no, I'm going to take enough for myself and then I'm going to work every day to be a good citizen to my humanity. Okay, someone asks, aren't there entities that want us to, to, to suffer just because they are sadistic? I'm just going to say, how 
is that mindset serving to help you evolve? How is that idea? What does that feed for you? What does it give you to think that that's true? Like if you really thought about letting that idea go and thinking, there are people out there who are absolutely selfish, that live for themselves, that look sadistic. And I've met these people. I've been around them. I know what these people are like. I'm not saying there aren't incredibly harmful people who are absolutely ruthlessly just out for themselves. That exists. But they are not the majority. Most people aren't extreme on any level. Most of humanity isn't who we see on the TV. It's very much just middle of the road, people who are just trying to make ends meet, people who are just trying to do their thing. So if we want to live in the world that we actually live in and have an impact, focusing on the small group of people who are absolutely at the top, who are there with nefarious intention, but it's not really a nefarious intention. They're there for themselves. If we start to say, again, the way that we're going to dissolve this structure is from the people who are not at the bottom, not at the top changing, the people who are in the middle, stopping feeding into that which enriches the top, where we have the option to. So we're not going to be perfect. Because So we step into that unknown, and then the third step is starting to realize that we are in the Western world, or wherever we are, where we have enough for ourselves, that we do this work. Because if we stop supporting the system and start creating a new one, those people at the top depend on us for the system to keep going. They depend on us staying in the mindset that they're in, which is what we are in when we are hustling, when we're pushing, when we're trying harder, when we're, when we're caught up in the next thing, the next thing I got to buy, the next thing I got to do, I'm not good enough, I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I got to do more, I got to get more, I got to be more successful, I got to be more famous, I got to be more impactful, I got to You're feeding the system. I got to have the next clothes, I got to have all this stuff, which then forces you to be busy, so you can't cook your own food, and you can't clean your own clothes, and you can't, and you need the bigger house, and you need the bigger car, and you need the, all the things. And then you are them. The more we feed the system, the more we are the ones that are propping it up. We're saying we want to take it down, but we're buying into it. We want to be millionaires. We want to have more control over the resources. That is not a sovereign society. A true sovereign society is when we all recognize that we need to work together. That taking more for ourselves than what we actually need so that we can then dictate to society how it works. We hate everyone who does that. We don't want a government telling us what we're supposed to be doing. We don't want a police force doing that. We don't want these people, corporations at the top with all the power because they have all the money. But then we, we want it because we think we're going to be the benevolent savior. No, we're not. None of us are. Our place in the world is finding our enough, which most of us have the luxury to do. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not talking to the people who are at the bottom of this pyramid, who don't have anything and are trying to make ends meet. OK, they're going to feed the corporations, because the corporations have priced their products low enough that they're in this loop of never getting out of it. We are the ones in the middle 
who have to stop taking more than we need. We have to stop playing into the system. We need to evolve ourselves. We need to look at the societal rules. Are these rules functional for long term? If I keep collecting things, if I keep buying more spiritual things, more retreats, more, 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 is this sustainable? What am I doing this for? Where do I think I'm going to get? Why can't I be okay with what I have? And if I'm okay with what I have and I'm okay with what I'm doing, where does that free me up to take more care of myself? Right? Because this is the other thing. When we're being more responsible with just our day-to-day -day choices, I know we can't buy everything on Etsy. I know we can't all only support organic and, and local farmers and blah, 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 blah. Okay, but we can all do a little bit more than we're doing. We can all take little steps every day to just be less harmful and more contributing to the world we want to see. It's the little things we do every single day that matter. It's not the big donation. It's not the big book launch. It's not the big talk. It's not the big whatever. Our impact is in our day-to-day -day choices, what we consume, what we choose not to consume, the, the things we feed versus the things we are not feeding. We have to recognize that's our power. And when we start to stop consuming, stop overproducing, stop over trying to help, stop focusing on the sadistic people out there. What we're going to come to is all of our own traumas and all of our own shit that we've been running from. And that's where us creating chaos in the world is coming from. And that's where so much of our perspective of the world is coming from. And if it's based in trauma and fight or flight, it's not reality. And then we are contributing to chaos even when we're trying to make it better. We think we're doing the right thing. We think we're helping and we're not. It's going to be sobering and it's going to be humbling. And we're going to realize we have so much less impact than we thought, but so much more impact than we thought. That the things that are actually important are our day-to-day -day lived choices. How do you interact with people? What things do you pay for every single day? What are you consuming that you don't need to be consuming? What are you doing that you don't need to be doing? Where are you denying your humanity to live in the system? I started drinking alcohol heavily because of years of knowing this and giving up. Absolutely. Because it's hard to just own yourself. But that's what we got to do. And so when we bring ourselves into nervous system regulation, we're okay with the unknown. We're okay with not knowing. We're okay with admitting that our thing that we've been doing is a projection and it's what we think is going to save the world and it isn't. We think it's going to make it all better, but it isn't because it isn't. And then we're open to learning something new to admitting that we didn't know, to admitting that our way of being before wasn't it. We're open to that. And then we start to be able to connect with our own bodies and our own fears and our own traumas, and we learn tools for processing that. So again, join my mystery school. There's so many ways. Massage, breathing, movement, um, crying, journaling, like, right? Every, that, re, those resources are everywhere. You know how, how to process, get in your body, feel, breathe, write, cry every day. You just make it a thing you do every day. You get into a habit of some form of body connection, breath connection, awareness of yourself. It's simple. This is why adult spirituality is not all these bells and whistles. You don't have to dress a certain way. You don't have to talk a certain way. You don't have to have crystals. You don't have to have anything. If you like those things, go for it. But that's not what spirituality is. Spirituality is being able to connect to the present moment, what is actually happening, to feel it, 
to ob observe what you're feeling and to learn something past your programming of what you think that means, what you think you have to do about it. You have to go into the unknown. So do you think that those at the top are the reflection of what is in our inner world? Yes. They are a reflection of the systems that we have. That's where that leads. And we need to fix heal what's inside. You don't need to fix it or heal it. It's coming from unawareness. It's coming from a childhood consciousness. We're not going to fix or heal anything. We're going to evolve past where we are. Because again, society is not broken. We are not broken. There's nothing wrong with us. We're evolving. Watch Spiral Dynamics. Fig read this. Read about this. It's just an evolutionary phase we're going through. So if we want to be part of the new world, we evolve ourselves. We evolve ourselves. We're not fixing anything. We're not broken. We validate how we feel. We start to connect with our actual selves. We admit that we don't know. We open to the new information. Okay, and then we start to actually take care of ourselves. Because when we start to take care of ourselves truly, it's going to completely alter how we interact with the world around us. When you start to understand what you actually need, when you start to come into awareness of what hurts and what feels good on a real level, your whole perspective of what reality is is going to come crashing down. That's how you awaken from the matrix. You don't just find a new set of rules, a new leader, a new teacher, a new savior, a new group. No. You go by yourself. Like it's really, it's a lot of de disconnecting. So you can actually reconnect with your feelings and yourself. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. Getting your own needs met. And this will bring your nervous system into regulation where you're then capable of actually observing what's actually happening, not just what you've been told is happening, not just what you've been told is what should happen or what is going to happen or what the solution to this is or what the problem is. You're going to see it for yourself. And you're going to see that a whole bunch of it is not true. Things that you thought were, you were so afraid of for your whole life never actually happened because that's not how it works. And you're an adult now who can meet your own needs. So you're not at the whim of needing the perfect society out there, right? We're all looking for the evil group because if there's the evil group, then we can just get rid of them and then we will be happy. That's childhood. That thing out there is the reason I'm not okay. Okay, again, not to say that there aren't things out there that need to change. Absolutely there are. But as adults, we have more power than we think we do. But we got to be able to recognize that. We got to be able to recognize our true sovereignty and where that actually comes from and how that can serve to support others. And it's going to be so much smaller than you think, but so much more impactful. Okay, so validate yourself. Learn to become that your own inner parent that you never had. You feel how you feel. And all of that is real, but just stop reacting to it right now. Be with it, validate it, but don't respond right away. Learn to create that gap, that witness. You can feel something without doing something about it. You can think a thought and then question, is that true? Is that real? Did that ever actually happen? Is this my program? Am I doing this again? Okay, why? Lean into that unknown. Process through your body. Slowly, slowly bring yourself into the present moment. That's why I say this present moment awareness is something we cultivate over time. It's not a place we get and then we're in nervous system regulation now. It's not the same thing as I've healed all my traumas. That's not what nervous system regulation is. Nervous system regulation can happen anytime we make ourselves feel safe for being who we are right now. So stop trying to fix yourself. Stop trying to change yourself. Validate who and what you are right now. Make it safe for you to be who and what you are right now. Make it safe to not know, be there for yourself, and then evolve. So we're, like I said, we're going to keep talking about this in the next video, but I just, 
evolving to adult paradigm means we let go of the evil people, savior, right group, right and wrong. We stop judging humanity as being stupid or evil or the savior. It, we're all just people operating from what we think we need to do to get our needs met. The right and wrong thing, good and bad, morality, it doesn't exist. So let yourself have that existential crisis. And there are consequences to our actions. So let's just keep observing our actions, the consequences, and then just saying, what do we want? What do we want? So if you're exhausted and you're tired, that's the, that's the consequence of your action. You might think it's helping people, or this is what I have to do to help people, but if that's not the reality, you're in a program. You gotta listen. Listen to your actual body, to your actual emotions. Learn to listen, not just hear and respond. Okay? Okay. We, we evolve past the paradigm when we allow ourselves to mature. There is no evil group that's gonna be overthrown or good group that's gonna do it. It's a humanity that's gonna evolve together. And that starts with you. The control you have is over you. Your day-to-day -day choices. What are you empowering? What are you feeding into you? What are you allowing to control you? Do you need more than you have or do you need to spend some more time with yourself? Do you need to keep going? Or are you running from you? And that's fine. Slowly, slowly, slowly make it safe to be who you are. And we all have this trauma. We all have these things we need to process through. And so there's lots of tools for how to do that. There's nothing wrong with you. Your traumas are real. The things that hurt you in life are real. And that's all information about what you need to do to live a life that's going to be good for you. And that's, again, what we're going to talk about in the next video. But for now, validate yourself, but realize that that good, bad, right, wrong paradigm, we got to evolve past it. There's more. Okay, so make yourself feel safe by validating who and what you are right now. That's the first step. That's always going to be what it is. That's why that's the one thing I teach. Self-love is the way. The moment you make yourself feel safe, the more you're going to be able to grow. See reality for how it is. Break out of the paradigm. Actually evolve past. Not just get into a new, different version of the same thing. Okay? Validate yourself. Make yourself feel safe right now. You're good enough just how you are. There's nothing broken about you. There's nothing to be fixed. You're not bad or wrong for not understanding things or being programmed or any of that. That's just how it is. Make yourself feel safe. You will be able to evolve. Okay. I love you. I'm going to see you in the next video. And until then, work on loving yourself. Do my ultimate self-love meditation. It's on my YouTube channel. Just do that over and over again. Just learn how to witness yourself and make yourself safe in exactly what you are right now. That's the first step to an evolving past childhood. Okay, I love you. You're the best.